So now that we've explored some ways to use the Evoc 20, I'd like to show you one of the ways that I like to do a little bit of sound design with it. One of the things that I like to do is use the Evoc 20 as a gated synth of sorts. So I'll hold down a chord on the Evoc 20 and it'll kind of pulse to a rhythm. To get this rhythm, we're gonna enlist the help of Ultrabeat. So I have this Ultrabeat set up here. It's basically just the default setting that it comes with. In order for me to get a pattern that I want, I'm going to come down here to the pattern area, right click or control click if you have a single button mouse and hit clear. There we go. Now I've got a completely clear ultra beat, nothing going on. I have the kick voice selected and I'm going to make myself a little kick pattern. So I'll have ultra beat running by hitting the play button here and I'll write a little rhythm. That'll work. I'm gonna keep the power button on because when I hit play in Logic, I want Ultra Beat to be playing the whole time so that I can just go to the and just hold chords and know that it's going to play the rhythm. To get the rhythm from Ultra Beat to the Evoc 20, I'm gonna use a send. So I'm gonna come over here to the channel strip setting for Ultra Beat. I'm gonna hold down on the send area and go to bus one. Now the next thing that I want to do is click and hold here and I'm going to choose the pre-fader option for the bus. Now what pre-fader means is even if I pull the volume down on this channel strip, it's still going to send audio somewhere. So it's like the audio gets sent out to the bus even before it reaches the volume in the output of this channel strip. Now the other setup thing that's really important to do is if I click on the send section here, bus 1, right next to it, I have auxiliary one, which has bus one on it. Now, if I turn the volume down here when I play the ultra beat, it doesn't send at all to bus one because I don't have this turned up. So I'm going to turn the send up. Uh oh, I'm starting to hear it again. Ultimately, what I want to do is I want Ultra Beat to be feeding the Evoc 20, but I don't want to hear Ultra Beat at all. So not only do we need to set up a pre-fader send on Ultra Beat, but we need to go to the auxiliary that's receiving bus one, and we're going to turn its stereo out off. So the way to do that is to come down underneath where it says bus one on auxiliary one, click and hold, and turn it to no output. Now this doesn't mean that the audio isn't going to go through that bus. It's still gonna go through that bus. We're just not gonna automatically hear it through that auxiliary. So now we should be able to work with things. So I'm gonna turn the volume back up on Ultra Beat and listen to my rhythm one more time. And now we go to the Evoc 20. To have the Evoc 20 set up properly, we need to make sure that its signal is not synth, but actually set to vocoder. That way it's gonna receive the input and then it's going to use that input for vocoding. The next thing I wanna do is come up to this sidechain option. The sidechain is where I tell it to listen to bus one. So now it's listening to bus one. If I go to ultra beat, I see that ultra beat is feeding bus one. It's pre-fader, so even if I turn this volume down, we'll still be able to hear its effect on the Evoc 20. I'm gonna go back up to the Evoc 20. I'm going to hit play in Logic. I can hear that rhythm playing, right? I hear that kick rhythm. And I'm gonna hold down some keys while I have the Evoc 20 on. And I'll turn the level up a bit. So it sounds like it's working, but like I said, I want to turn the ultra beat down. So I'm not hearing ultra beat, I'm just hearing its effect on the Evoc 20. So I'm going to go over to ultra beat, go to its volume, and I'm going to turn it completely down, but it's still sending to bus one. 
go back to the Evoc 20, and when I hit play in Logic, I should hear just the Evoc 20. Now that might be a bit loud now, so I'll turn its output volume down a bit. But as we hear, the ultra beat is actually affecting the Evoc 20, and I've got this nice little gated synth effect sound. And I don't hear the ultra beat when I let go of the keys. A couple of things I might want to do to tighten this up a bit is turn the attack down. And I'm also going to turn the release down a bit. So now it's coming on immediately when the kick hits, and it's got a very, it's got a, a little tiny bit of release. So when I let go of the keys, it releases kind of slow. So we'll do a couple of other things now. I'm going to keep Logic in play while I tweak. Maybe I'll add bands. So we'll go up to 20 bands. Maybe I'll stretch the formants a bit and then limit the bandwidth. Maybe a format shift too. Okay, so that's pretty fun. And the more elements that we add to Ultrabeat, uh, the more complex this Evoc 20 is gonna sound. So I'll keep the Ultrabeat open, and I'm gonna add myself in some clap rhythms. And since these occupy a different bandwidth, the clap's gonna be a much higher frequency sound, it should alter how our Evoc 20 reacts. Our Evoc 20 should pick up more of those high frequencies. So now not only are we getting a gated synth, but we're also sort of handpicking what frequencies that synth is going to use. And I can go ahead and record my Evoc 20 line now. I'm going to hit record and then just play some chords. I'm going to go ahead and make that loop. Oh, I should quantize it. I probably didn't play exactly on the beat. I'll turn my format shift back down. And I'm increasing its bandwidth. Now I'll go back to Ultra Beat and start adding other elements. Like, let's try a uh, hi-hat, maybe. Turn the volume up on the hi-hat. So that's pretty fun. That's a way that we can make a gated synth using Ultrabeat and the Evoc 20. And the important part of this sort of design is that we're using a pre-fader send. We've turned the output off on the auxiliary, and we've turned the volume down on Ultrabeat. So there's making a gated synth. <laughs>